A decade ago, my wife walked out on me and our five kids, leaving our lives in turmoil. Suddenly, I was faced with the overwhelming task of raising five children alone. Through the tears and doubts, I persevered, and each passing year only strengthened our bond and resilience. But nothing could have prepared me for what would happen ten years later. When she found out what I had done, her reaction was nothing short of shock. My alarm buzzed at 5 a.m. and I groggily turned it off. Rolling out of bed, I tiptoed to the kitchen. Quiet mornings were my sanctuary, a brief moment of peace before the day's chaos ensued. As I cracked eggs into a pan, their sizzle greeted the dawn. The coffee pot gurgled, filling the room with a comforting aroma. This routine had become my anchor, the ritual that kept our family stitched together. As I flipped pancakes, I couldn't help but reflect on my chaotic but fulfilling life. Raising five children alone was never part of the plan, but it became my reality. Each smile at the breakfast table made the sleepless nights worth it. Their laughter filled our home, a stark contrast to the silence that followed their mother's departure. It had been a tough journey, but one I wouldn't trade for anything. Dad, I can't find my homework, shouted my youngest from the hallway. With a slight chuckle, I handed over a forgotten lunchbox to another kid. All right, everyone, let's get moving, I commanded, orchestrating the morning's organized chaos. Shoes were tied, jackets zipped, and backpack straps adjusted in a hurry. Moments later, we piled into the minivan, and I juggled a mix of breakfast dishes and last-minute school forms. Mornings were a whirlwind, but I cherished them. Once the kids were safely dropped off, I headed to my job at the local construction company. The hum of machinery greeted me as I walked onto the site, my steel-toed boots crunching gravel underfoot. I waved to Jim, my supervisor, and began setting up for the day. Despite the physical toll, I found solace here where my mind could shift away from the worries of home, even if only briefly. My colleagues often admired my resilience. I don't know how you do it, remarked Pete during a lunch break. Five kids and still showing up here with a smile. I shrugged, a modest grin on my face. They didn't know the half of it. The late night homework help, the parent-teacher conferences, the juggling act of dinner and bedtime. But I carried on, motivated by the love for my children and their future. On my way home from work, I flipped through the day's mail absent-mindedly until a particular envelope caught my eye, addressed in familiar handwriting. It felt like a punch to the gut. I froze, memories of my wife's departure rushing back. What could she possibly want after all these years? The envelope weighed heavy in my hand as I walked into the house my mind a swirl of questions and unresolved emotions. The next morning, I received surprising news at work. Gareth, can I see you in my office? Jim asked. We've been really impressed with your dedication and hard work. Jim began. We'd like to offer you a promotion. Stunned, I nodded, trying to process the words. With the promotion came increased responsibility and longer hours but the extra income promised a brighter future for my family. I knew I'd have a big decision to make soon. The increased responsibility meant longer hours, but it also promised a better future for my family. As I pondered the offer, I thought about the financial freedom it would bring. Yet, the cost was time away from my kids, whom I had dedicated my life to raising. Torn between personal sacrifice and professional advancement, I felt the heavy weight of the decision settle over me. It was a bittersweet opportunity, requiring careful thought. Driving home, I thought about the sacrifices I had made for my children, the missed social gatherings, the countless sleepless nights, and the relentless pace of single parenthood had become my norm. I parked the car and saw the letter from my estranged wife on the dashboard. Could I manage both the promotion and the emotional storm brewing from her unexpected outreach? My mind wrestled with the choices, each demanding more than I thought I could give. That evening, I sat down with my eldest child, who had been acting as a second parent since their mother left. I got offered a promotion today. I began, watching the teenager's eyes widen. It means more money, but also longer hours. 
My eldest smiled faintly, a mix of pride and concern. We'll manage, Dad. They said, the words carrying a weight only someone who had matured too quickly would understand. We shared a rare moment of acknowledgement and gratitude, emotions swirling but unspoken. Thank you for everything, I said, my eyes meeting my eldest. They nodded, the simple gesture conveying volumes. Yet, the thought of the letter gnawed at me. I absentmindedly touched my pocket, feeling its weight. The room grew silent except for the ticking clock. Despite the warmth of the moment, I couldn't shake the lurking memory of my wife's departure. Later that night, I finally decided to open the letter. With trembling hands, I tore it open, curiosity and dread mixing in my gut. The familiar handwriting seemed to leap off the page as I began to read. My heart pounded in my chest. After all these years, what could she possibly want now? I scanned the first few lines, the words blurring momentarily as I tried to absorb their meaning. She talked about wanting to reconnect with a family she had abandoned years ago. She wrote about undergoing significant changes in her life, making it clear she wanted another chance. My pulse quickened as I read her plea for forgiveness. Memories of our life together surfaced, intermingled with the pain of her sudden departure. The letter ended with an entreaty for a conversation, leaving me both angry and bewildered. Torn between anger and curiosity, I set the letter down and rubbed my temples. I knew responding immediately would only lead to impulsive decisions. I needed time to process how I felt and what this meant for my children. Could I trust her intentions? The question swirled in my mind, but I consciously decided against sending a reply just yet. My kids deserved to be part of this significant decision. I realized I needed to talk to my kids about their mother's sudden interest in coming back. I glanced at the letters sprawled across the table, debating the best approach. Should I tell them everything or filter out some details? Pacing to the kitchen, I caught my eldest eye, who seemed to sense something was amiss. We need to chat, I said, trying to muster the strength for what lay ahead. The letter had stirred up old wounds for me, thoughts I had long buried resurfaced with grappling intensity. I remember the night she left, the confusion and heartache in my children's eyes, the guilt I shouldered for not being enough. Each memory was a sharp needle, pricking the surface just as I started to feel whole again. Yet, I knew I couldn't avoid the situation. My children deserved transparency, however painful. During dinner, I kept the letter to myself. I watched my kids laugh and chatter, the normalcy feeling increasingly fragile. Their routine comforted me, but inside I was a tangle of nerves. How would they react to the news? Dad, you're quiet tonight. My youngest remarked, breaking my train of thought. I forced a smile, hoping to delay the inevitable. For now, I would let them enjoy this moment of peace. Over the following days, I started noticing subtle changes in my children's behavior. My elders seemed more distracted, often lost in thought, while the younger ones began asking questions about their mother out of the blue. Dad, do you think mom ever misses us? My middle child asked one evening, catching me off guard. The question lingered in the air, adding to my growing anxiety. The time to address the letter was drawing near. Even my eldest, usually so focused, seemed distant, almost as if they sensed a shift in the family dynamic. Is there something you're not telling us? They asked plainly, catching me mid-sentence. The younger kids, too, began reminiscing about their mother, asking questions that had been left unanswered for too long. I realized I couldn't delay the conversation any longer. The children needed clarity, and it was up to me to provide it. I could no longer keep the letter a secret. My children sensed something was off, and avoiding the conversation was only making things worse. I needed to address the issue openly, giving my kids the clarity they deserved. The weight of the letter felt lighter now that I had made a decision. I needed to prepare myself for a conversation that would reopen old wounds, but also provide a path forward. Over a weekend family dinner, I finally mustered the courage to share the contents of the letter with my kids. I took a deep breath, gathering them around the table. 
Kids, there's something important I need to tell you. I began, my voice steady but heavy with emotion. As I read the letter aloud, I watched their faces shift from confusion to shock. The room felt tense, each word resonating deeply within their hearts. The kids' reactions were a mix of curiosity, anger, and indifference. My eldest clenched their fists, struggling to contain their frustration. Why now, after all these years, they demanded. The younger ones, however, seemed more curious, asking simple yet profound questions. Does she really want to come back? One asked softly. I could see the conflict in their eyes. Part of them wanted answers, while another part wanted to push the memory away. I assured my children that nothing would happen without their input. We'll take this one step at a time, I said, meeting their eyes. Your feelings matter, and we'll consider them above everything else. The tension in the room eased slightly, though uncertainty still lingered. I promised to navigate this together, emphasizing unity. We're a team, I added. We face this as a family. My words offered a semblance of comfort amid the emotional storm. As I accumulated more responsibilities at work due to my promotion, balancing my time became increasingly difficult. My mornings started earlier and my nights stretched longer. Despite my best efforts, the demands of work began to encroach on my time with the family. I found myself constantly juggling tasks, feeling spread thinner each day. The strain was palpable, both at home and on the construction site. As I tried to keep everything together, Jim, my boss, noticed my distraction and called me in for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Gareth, is everything okay? He asked, concern evident in his voice. I sighed, running a hand through my hair. Actually, there's been a lot going on at home, I admitted. Jim nodded, leaning back in his chair. You've been doing an amazing job, but I can see you're under a lot of stress. Let's talk about what's going on, he suggested. During the chat, I opened up about my family situation. I explained the letter from my estranged wife and the emotional toll it had taken. Jim listened intently, offering a supportive ear. That sounds incredibly tough, Jim said sympathetically. If you need any flexibility, don't hesitate to ask. We're here to support you. I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. Knowing my boss understood gave me a renewed perspective on handling my responsibilities. Motivated by Jim's advice, I decided to seek legal counsel to understand my options regarding my wife's potential return. I wanted to be prepared, ensuring my family's well-being remained protected. I scheduled an appointment with a lawyer, hoping to gain clarity on custody issues and any legal ramifications. This step gave me a sense of control amid the chaos, offering a proactive approach to an otherwise unpredictable situation. Meanwhile, my children began researching their mother's life over the past 10 years. Equipped with the internet and an insatiable curiosity, they unearthed surprising details. Dad, we found some stuff about mom, my eldest said, showing me their findings. The information painted a complex picture of their mother's life, filled with struggles and changes. My heart ached as I realized my kids were growing up faster than I wanted, taking on burdens they shouldn't have to. My stress level soared as I tried to manage work, home, and the legal complexities. Each day felt like a marathon, with little time to catch my breath. I found myself constantly worrying about my kids' well-being, the impact of my wife's sudden interest, and the new responsibilities at work. Nights became restless, my mind racing with endless scenarios. It was a delicate balancing act, and every misstep felt like a potential downfall. I found myself overwhelmed by the weight of the new promotion and the emotional storm brewing at home. The additional responsibilities at work felt like a mountain I had to climb, each step making it harder to balance my family life. My mind constantly raced, filled with concerns about both my job and how to address my estranged wife's letter. The burden was immense, leaving me mentally and physically exhausted. During a particularly tough day, I decided to confide in an old friend, Mark, who had gone through a messy divorce. We met at a local diner, where I unburdened myself. 
Mark, I don't know how much more I can handle, I confessed. Mark nodded, understanding the depths of my struggle. Let's talk through it, Mark offered, his voice steady and reassuring. The conversation provided me with a much-needed release of pent-up emotions. Gaining perspective from Mark, I decided to start attending support group meetings for single parents. The first meeting was nerve-wracking, but I quickly found solace in shared experiences. Hearing other stories made me feel less alone, each account a reminder that I wasn't the only one facing such challenges. The room was filled with nodding heads and empathetic smiles, providing a comforting environment where I felt truly understood. At these support group meetings, I learned various coping strategies and legal advice that I began to implement, practical tips on managing time better, and navigating legal complexities helped me regain a sense of control. You're doing great, Gareth, one of the group members encouraged. With every meeting, I felt more equipped to handle my situation. The newfound knowledge became my armor, aiding me in tackling the mounting responsibilities. A sense of newfound strength and resolve took over, pushing me to address the issues more methodically. I started making lists, setting priorities, and seeking professional assistance where needed. We've got this. I reassured my children one evening. The support group's advice was invaluable, grounding me in practical solutions. Slowly but surely, I began feeling my footing return, ready to face the challenges ahead with renewed determination. Still, the uneasy piece of home felt like it was dangling by a thread. The children sensed the undercurrent of tension, adding a layer of stress to their daily lives. I tried to maintain normalcy, but the atmosphere was undeniably tense. Everything okay, Dad? My eldest asked, concern evident in their eyes. I nodded, forcing a smile. The resolution was fragile, and everyone seemed to walk on eggshells, mindful of the looming uncertainties. One evening, my eldest child approached me with some shocking revelations they found online about their mother. Dad, you need to see this they said, showing me their research. The screen displayed social media profiles and news articles, painting a picture I hadn't imagined. Seeing her life from a different perspective created a whirlpool of emotions. The children pieced together information, their diligence revealing more than I was prepared for. Their research revealed that she had been in another relationship and might be seeking reconciliation for ulterior motives. Look, Dad, she's been struggling financially, my eldest pointed out. The various posts and mentions indicated a life fraught with instability. I felt my suspicions creeping up, yet I hesitated to draw conclusions without concrete proof. The new information created even more complexity, leaving me unsure of the next steps. My suspicions were somewhat confirmed, but without solid evidence, I remained hesitant to jump to conclusions. We need to be careful, I cautioned my kids. Let's not assume the worst just yet. There were too many variables and I didn't want to act impulsively. My children's involvement made it more complicated, adding weight to every decision. I chose to stay cautious, evaluating each piece of information meticulously before taking any action. To clear our minds, the family decided to take a mini vacation. We headed to a cozy cabin by the lake seeking a break from our everyday stresses. The change in scenery worked wonders as laughter and joy slowly returned. This is just what we needed, I said, relaxing by the campfire. Shared moments of fun and peace helped us regain some semblance of normalcy. The trip allowed the family to reconnect and strengthen our bond. During our trip, the bond between us strengthened. Laughter echoed through the woods as we hiked, played games, and sat by the campfire. I taught my youngest how to fish while the older kids shared stories, releasing pent-up stress. Every moment felt like a stitch in the fabric holding us together. For a brief time, we could forget the looming worries, enjoying pure, uninterrupted joy as a family. Back home, I started an investigation into my wife's life. I reached out to mutual friends, trying to piece together her activities over the past decade. A few friends were willing to share tidbits, painting a picture of instability and struggle. 
It wasn't much, but every piece of information added to the puzzle. The more I uncovered, the more I realized how complex her situation had become, intensifying my need for clarity. Just as the family settled back into our routine, I received a call from an unknown number. I hesitated then answered. Hello. A familiar voice responded. Gareth, it's me. My pulse quickened. She wanted to discuss her plans to visit. The audacity left me momentarily speechless. I just want to see the kids, she pleaded. The request hung in the air, sparking a mix of irritation and uncertainty about her true intentions. We had a tense conversation, where her words were laced with both desperation and determination. I only want to see the kids again, she claimed, her voice wavering. My skepticism was undeniable, my tone guarded. After all this time, why now? I questioned, my frustration palpable. She had little to offer in terms of concrete answers, but the insistence in her voice suggested she wouldn't give up easily. The call ended, leaving more questions than answers. Despite my palpable distrust, I agreed to a meeting under strict conditions. We'll meet in a public place, I insisted. And if the kids don't want to see you, it ends there. She reluctantly agreed, sensing my unwavering resolve. The date was set, but I couldn't shake the unease creeping up my spine. What was her real motive? I hoped I wasn't making a mistake, fully aware that the kids' well-being was at stake. As the encounter drew near, the children were visibly anxious. Do we really have to see her? The youngest asked, clutching my hand. They battled mixed emotions, ranging from curiosity to dread. My eldest echoed the sentiment, though more restrained. It's been so long, Dad. How do we prepare for this? I did my best to reassure them, but the collective anxiety was hard to miss. Everyone felt the weight of what was coming. I set up a meeting place, choosing a neutral location to avoid any potential conflict. A local park seemed sensible, offering both a public setting and a familiar environment. I notified my wife, reiterating the conditions. We'll meet at 2 p.m. by the duck pond. I confirmed. My heart raced at the thought of the upcoming day, but I focused on maintaining control. The stage was set, but the emotional undercurrent remained turbulent. On the day of the meeting, tensions were high. I found myself second-guessing whether I was making the right decision. My mind raced with what-ifs, each scenario more daunting than the last. The kids sensed my unease, which only fueled their own apprehensions. Are we sure about this, Dad? My eldest asked, voicing the collective anxiety. I took a deep breath, trying to project confidence I didn't entirely feel. They needed me strong. The reunion was fraught with tension. As my wife approached, tears filled her eyes upon seeing her grown children. The kids stood guarded, their expressions a mix of skepticism and confusion. She attempted to explain her past decisions, but the words fell flat. I was going through a lot, she started, but their blank stare said it all. The encounter was awkward, filled with strained silences. I watched closely, maintaining my composure despite the emotional storm. Her attempts to explain her past decisions fell flat, hitting walls of skepticism and guardedness. I was young and scared, she confessed, but the kids' faces remained stern. Their eldest, breaking the silence, asked, what do you expect from us now? The question seemed to hang in the air, unanswered. The meeting ended without resolution, leaving me to manage the aftermath. I promised to dig deeper, driven by the need for thorough understanding. The meeting was awkward and filled with strange silences, punctuated by awkward attempts at conversation. I maintained my composure, my eyes carefully observing every reaction. So... How have you all been, she asked, her voice tinged with uncertainty. The kids glanced at each other, unsure how to respond. We've been managing, I replied, cutting through the tension. I kept my emotions in check, focusing on the children's well-being above all. Afterward, the children expressed their confused emotions, not knowing whether to trust their mother's intentions. Why now, Dad? Why did she come back? My youngest asked, eyes filled with uncertainty. I sighed, 
gathering them close. I don't have all the answers, but we'll figure it out together, I assured. The mixed feelings of anger, sadness, and curiosity were palpable. The conversation cast a heavy shadow over our usually bright home. Seeking closure, I decided to dig deeper into her current life by hiring a private investigator. We need to know more before making any decisions. I explained to my eldest, who nodded in understanding. The investigator, a seasoned professional, promised to gather comprehensive details. I handed over an old photograph and relevant information. Find out everything you can, I urged. This step felt proactive, a necessary measure to protect our family's future. The days that followed became a waiting game, filled with anxiety and anticipation for the investigator's findings. Every time the phone rang, my heart skipped a beat. Nights were restless, the wait relentless. I, I kept busy with work and home responsibilities to distract myself. The kids sensed my unease, adding to their own. Any news yet? My elders would ask daily, their voice reflecting a blend of hope and dread as the weeks passed. I started receiving updates from the investigator. Each report shed more light on my wife's questionable activities, conversations with mutual acquaintances, uncovering her social media posts. It all painted a grim picture. She's been struggling financially and legally, the investigator noted. I sat quietly, absorbing the information. The findings were both a relief and a point of sorrow, confirming my fears about her ulterior motives. The evidence pointed to financial struggles and legal troubles she was trying to escape by reconnecting with the family. I sat with the reports, feeling a mixture of vindication and grief. She's in debt up to her ears and even facing some lawsuits, the investigator reported. The selfishness of her motives stung more than I had anticipated. She wasn't looking for a future with us, just an escape from her own past mistakes. I felt vindicated but deeply saddened by the selfish motives behind her return. The updates confirmed what I had feared. She was using our family as a lifeline. I knew it. I muttered, eyes heavy with despair. Although the truth provided clarity, it also reopened old wounds. I had hoped, somewhere deep down, for a genuine reconciliation. Instead, I was confronted with the reality of her self-serving intentions. I shared the findings with my children, holding a heart-to-heart -heart talk about trust and making tough decisions. I need you all to understand what's really going on. I began laying out the investigators' reports. Their eyes widened as they read through the documents, understanding the gravity of the situation. We'll handle this together, I reassured them. The conversation was filled with honesty and vulnerability, bringing us all closer in the process. The family agreed to move forward without their mother, feeling a sense of unity in our decision. We can do this, just like we always have, I said, my voice filled with determination. The children nodded, each coming to terms with the reality of their mother's actions. The mutual decision to protect our bond fortified our resolve. Together, we made a pact to support each other. Our unity cemented stronger than ever. I began taking steps to legally protect our family from any potential manipulation. I consulted with the lawyer again, laying out a plan to secure our financial and emotional well-being. We need to cover all bases. I explained, signing documents that would safeguard our future. The legal measures provided a layer of security, putting my mind at ease. For the first time in weeks, I felt a sense of control returning to our lives. The big reveal finally arrived. I gathered my children around the dining table. I took a deep breath before unfolding the documents I had been quietly working on for years. I have something important to show you, I began. My kids looked on curiously as I slowly laid the papers out, their eyes widening with each passing moment. What these documents contained was a testament to my love and dedication. Over the past 10 years, I had been quietly saving and investing money to secure a better future for my kids. I explained this to them, detailing the sacrifices I made and the financial strategies I adopted. I wanted to make sure you all could go to college, have a stable life. I said, my voice filled with emotion. 
The children's faces softened, realizing the extent of my commitment. I finalized adopting them officially, ensuring they were legally protected against any form of custody claim their mother might make. I wanted to make sure you're always with me, no matter what, I said, looking into each of their eyes. The weight of my words settled in the room, bringing a sense of security they hadn't fully experienced before. The legal documents symbolized a new, unbreakable bond. The children were stunned and deeply moved, their eyes brimming with tears. They had always known I loved them, but seeing the depth of my planning and effort was overwhelming. Dad, you did all this for us? My youngest asked incredulously. I nodded, tears forming in my eyes too. The realization hit them hard, finally understanding the depth of my love and dedication. It was a moment none of us would forget. As we hugged, I felt a wave of relief. The years of hard work, the sleepless nights, and the relentless worries were worth it. I took a deep breath, feeling the emotional weight lift off my shoulders. We're going to be okay? I whispered, holding them close. The room was filled with love and a sense of newfound security. At that moment, I knew we could face the future without fear. Together, we stood stronger and more united than ever before. The legal and financial safeguards I had put in place fortified our bond, giving us a sense of stability and assurance. We're a team and we'll always have each other. I reminded them. The children nodded, their hearts filled with newfound confidence. For the first time in a long while, we felt that everything was going to be all right. The future seemed brighter. In the weeks that followed, we found a new sense of balance and peace. The emotional storm had subsided, replaced by a calm resilience. We settled into our routines with renewed energy, knowing we had each other's back. Feels good to have some normalcy, my eldest remarked, and I couldn't agree more. Our home felt lighter, free from the constant shadow of worry or unexpected disruptions. We began to focus on our goals and dreams, no longer overshadowed by their mother's return. Dad, I want to join the soccer team, my middle child announced one evening. Go for it, I encouraged, relishing this renewed enthusiasm. The children poured their efforts into school, hobbies, and future plans. It was a shift that signaled healing, a focus on growing and thriving rather than just surviving. Life felt promising again. I took pride in watching my children grow into strong, independent individuals. Each of them showed remarkable resilience, channeling their energy into positive outlets. My eldest excelled in academics, while the younger ones found joy in sports and arts. You're doing wonderful things, I often reminded them, my heart swelling with pride. Seeing them flourish was my greatest reward, a testament to our collective strength and unity as a family. We moved forward with resilience and hope, ready to face whatever the future held together. My preparations had secured our stability, but our collective spirit was what truly held us strong. We're ready for anything, Dad. My youngest said confidently and I smiled, feeling the same. United by love, trust, and a shared journey, we faced a future with optimism. The past remained a chapter, but our story was far from over.